Hello, everybody, and welcome to Development Thoughts number 22 for Risk of Rain 2. That's right, we are already back in here with some brand spanking new news for the upcoming DLC. As always, I will leave a link in the description below to the full Development Thoughts if you'd like to read them for yourself, as I will just be covering the key points. So if you would like to hear Jonathan Cheatham, the community manager's rather attractive voice. Hello, and welcome to the Hopu Games Dev Thoughts number 22. There will also be a link in the description below for that. First things first, before we get into the actual Risk of Rain 2 news, some rather big news for Hopu Games, the company itself. I believe they are still located in Seattle. They just change their location, which probably leads to more space, more connections, etc, etc. So it's only a good thing. And then also we have a nice little picture of the lead programmer Gore here, looking rather spooky, if you will. And then here we are with the Risk of Rain 2 stuff. The first pieces of information here are done in an FAQ style. So the first question is, what is the release date of the expansion and will it be launching on console at the same time as PC? Now we have no new information on the release date. It is still slated for quarter one of 2022, meaning anywhere from January to March of that year. And if uh, you had to place a bet on it, I would definitely go with March. And secondly, the console version is now no longer slated to release simultaneously with PC. If you remember back when the DLC was first announced, Hopu did say that they were going to do everything they could to release the console version with the PC version. That is no longer the case. And the reason they give for this is that the more they developed, the more they realized that they would have to delay the Steam or PC version to get this done. Now, I know this is unfortunate news for you console gamers out there. However, you have to remember that Hopu Games is a primarily PC developer, meaning that as they develop this DLC, both creatively and technically, they are focusing on the PC side of things and then and giving that information over to the console teams, which I believe those teams are under their Gearbox publishing deal. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that Hopu themselves focuses on the PC side of things and primarily or entirely leaves the console side of things over to the other teams that they're involved with. So while everyone on console does have to wait now for this DLC, hopefully this means that you will get a strictly better product rather than an inferior rushed one that you would have gotten. Moving on to the second question here, how does multiplayer work with people who own the DLC and those who do not? Basically, so long as one single person in that entire lobby owns the DLC, then everybody has access to the items, monsters, and stages in the DLC, not the survivors. So the only thing that you will miss out on if you do not own the DLC are the new survivors. If you play with a friend or a random person in the lobby that owns the DLC, you will have everything else available to you. That's honestly the best outcome that we all could have asked for. Moving on to number three, how much is this thing going to cost? They are still discussing the exact price, and of course they want to land on a price that represents the amount of new content and also a good value for players, obviously. But if we just look at the current price of Risk of Rain 2, which is $25, and then we just extrapolate off of that, I would say the DLC is going to be anywhere from $10 to $15. I can't imagine that they're going to come anywhere close to the full retail price of the game for this upcoming DLC. And of course, once they solidify the price, they will announce it as soon as possible. And number four, hands down the most important question, how can I protect Gubo Jr. from this horrible world? Well, you don't need to worry because Gubo Jr. is a strong independent gummy who don't need no survivor. Those are their words, not mine. All right, now let's get into some juicy reveals for the upcoming DLC. Number one, the theme of the DLC is going to be The Void. They say that approximately one third of the new content is void themed, including the brand new loot tier that was teased in the last development thoughts. They have now been fully revealed as void items. Basically how these items work is that once you pick them up via this little void scrapper looking thing right here, every single stack of your regular item will be converted into the void doppelganger version, which seems to be a strictly more powerful version. And they give us a few examples here. Number one, the lost Sears lenses, which are the upgrade to the lens maker's glasses, your crit chance, making them have a 0.5% chance per stack to instantly kill any non-boss enemies. Now, here's an important thing to note. Do you see critical strike chance anywhere on this item? No, that means it is pretty much entirely gone. Aside from your predatory instincts and your harvester scythe, which each give you 5% crit plus your 1% base crit on each survivor, I believe that means that once you pick up these lost seer lenses, you will no longer be able to have capped crit. Unless, of course, they add new sources of crit to the game. And you can see the effect here of the insta kill proccing. It does like multiple explosions of hundreds of thousands of damage there. You know, just to flex on them a little bit. Also, I didn't play a lot of Risk of Rain 1, but I do believe this item is similar to the telescopic sight, which also gave a 0.5% or a 1% chance, something like that, to instantly kill an enemy. So, it's a pretty cool nod to that item. Next is the Weeping Fungus, which is obviously just the upgrade to the Bustling Fungus. You now heal for 2% of your health every second while sprinting instead of standing still. I don't think I need to explain it. That is ridiculously powerful. The next one is the upgrade to the ukulele called the Poly Loot, which essentially does the same exact thing as the ukulele, just single target instead of AoE. Also, it does less damage. I believe the ukulele is 80% total damage instead of 50%. But remember, this one is hitting the same target each time. And in this little GIF here, yes, it's called a GIF. I don't want to hear it. Don't even start in the comments. You can see the single Single target lightning proccing on some beetles here. Now, I just thought of this right now, actually, instead of when I was talking about the crit glasses, this actually might mean that anything in your inventory is converted into the poly loot 
and then any future items that you pick up, so crit glasses or ukuleles, will still give the regular benefit. Meaning that if you have three ukuleles and you convert them into three polyloots, then you pick up a fourth ukulele, you will keep that one regular ukulele and then have three of these polyloots. That's probably what's going to go on here. I don't know why I didn't think of that earlier when I was talking about the crit glasses. Uh, but if it doesn't do that, this is going to be a pretty big detriment because you're going to lose out on proc chaining, which everybody knows proc chaining is like the way to deal damage in this game. And just to end the depth dots here, we have a cute little hermit crab hybrid turtle thingy here. I don't know what's supposed to be but other than that that is all with the development thoughts number 22 what are your guys thoughts do you like the new void items are you upset about the console delay let me know in the comments below you can check out my stream at twitch.tv slash wooly gaming and consider joining our discord server at discord.gg slash wooly thank you guys for watching and i'll see you on the next video